Workshop topics, buying a Myford lathe, this is part two. Partially dismantling the lathe to get it ready to move and clearing the other contents of the workshop. In this clip, all I'd done at the lathe was to remove the vertical slide. But to make the lathe a good bit lighter and prevent damage to things like the covers, I'm going to dismantle it further. These Myfords are only small lathes, but they are surprisingly heavy. This lathe is in a very small shed. It measures about 8 feet by 6 feet. Insufficient room to swing a cat. Not that I go into strangers' sheds and swing cats around, you understand. Clearing very small sheds is not really what I do, and I'm definitely not the right shape for this job. Where to start? I'll take a few pictures. Sorting everything out and filling my car with boxes of assorted parts took approximately four hours on the 16th of April 2021. You may be thinking, why do I want to buy a Myford lathe? I have a perfectly good Boxford lathe. And the reason is, I want to make a series about renovating a Myford lathe, and this one is perfect for the job. And when I've finished it, I have a perfect space for it in my workshop. I don't want the welded box section stand. I will leave that in place. Sorry for the wobbly camera work too, because there's no real place to put the tripod. If you look carefully in this clip, you will see parts of a Quorn tool and cutter grinder. It's fairly complete, I think it's just lacking the base. And there's also a cover for the lathe, which says Myford on it. And a very old and very small vacuum cleaner. I found this full of Myford tools, with a hand pump sat on the top. And the brief now is to pack everything into suitable containers to move to my car. This is a long, broken plastic box, and it has various pieces of metal rod in it. Sat in the corner of the shed by the electrical system, and I use the term lightly, is a very old Union tapping machine. So this is just a small bonus. I really am not a hoarder, so I didn't take everything that was in the shed. Only the things that I could personally use in my workshop. Like this small machine vice. You never know when you're going to need a small Myford machine vice. I don't really need these, a box of gunmetal castings, but I can offer them to my friends at Blackgates Engineering because I'm pretty sure that's where they came from. A lot of the items can be absorbed into my collection of bits and pieces. In this box, for instance, there are quite a few good taps. But I'm not going to take stuff like this, an old paraffin blow lamp, and random small tubs of bits and pieces. In the left-hand corner of this image is something really useful. It's a spirit level for levelling lathes. On the shelf below there are a few dies, a few taps, some tap wrenches, and a kit to assemble a coolant service. Time now to tackle the electrical system. I switched off and withdrew the fuses from this small consumer unit. When I refurbish the lathe, I'm not going to use any of this, but it could be useful for other jobs. I verified that the circuit was dead and removed the lid from the contactor, and then I turned my attention to the double socket and disconnected the power from that. I asked the lady in the house to temporarily turn off the power. Covid regulations did make this job a little bit more difficult, mainly because there was no cups of tea forthcoming from the house, but luckily I thought about that so I brought my own water. I'm going to remove the aluminium covers because I don't want to damage them when I'm moving the lathe. And the first one to go was the large one that covers the pulleys. I'm also going to remove the hand wheel at the end of the lead screw because this is too convenient to grab a hold of when you're moving the lathe. And I really would hate to bend the lead screw. At this point I was already thinking ahead and looking forward to painting this green hand wheel grey. Once I unbolted the framework from the bench, I could then rotate the lathe, and here it is the other way round. In these Covid times, moving this lathe is going to create me some problems. Luckily, my support bubble, which consists of my eldest daughter and family, made it possible for my eldest daughter and her husband to enter this small space to remove the lathe. That will happen tomorrow. For now, here are the covers, all sat on the bench. These were very carefully packed and placed in the car. I really had to fight the urge at this stage to not take this very old table tennis set. So why did I buy this lathe? It's not a new one and it's in very good condition for its age and it will be ideal for a video about renovating a Myford lathe. The main good thing about it as I showed in the previous video is the fact that the lathe bed is in incredibly good condition. I'm going to remove the motor 
for two reasons. One is to make the lathe lighter because this small motor is very heavy. And the other reason being I'm going to fit a new motor with modern controls. And these modern controllers allow variable speed, so I can quickly make adjustments to the speed without removing covers and moving belts. That's the plan anyway. Getting the pulley off the motor was an absolute pain. We did this the day after on the Saturday. I didn't video this operation because with my son-in-law and myself in this small space, there was just no way I could put the tripod in there or the camera. All you would have seen was just myself and my son-in-law swearing a lot. In the end, with my son-in-law holding two spanners behind the pulley up against the motor, I used a soft hammer on the end of the shaft to dislodge the pulley. And in the end, it reluctantly came off the shaft. The next part that we removed was the drip tray, and this was surprisingly heavy too. The job took a lot longer than I thought. Here's a before photograph. And while I'm editing this video, the lathe and various other boxes of bits and pieces are still in the back of my car. The next time you see the lathe, it will be in the workshop on one of the benches. Luckily, as well as my son-in-law, my eldest daughter was here. Her name is Emma, and she thinks nothing of running 20 kilometres. She's really driven. I don't know where she gets that from. And a while back, she ran something called the Marathon de Sable, which involves running five marathons across the Sahara Desert. And that is running in sand. I find it difficult enough walking up a sandy beach to buy an ice cream. But nothing really phases Emma, she just gets on with it. So when it came to moving the lathe, Emma offered to carry one end, and her husband carried the other one. I must have played the age card because I is well old in it. The shed was cleared and the contents are now dotted about my workshop. I have to move things around in the workshop because something else is arriving this week too. Very soon there will be a series called Refurbishing a Myford ML7 Lathe, and I'm quite looking forward to making this. That's all for now though, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.